Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Highlander Mage. Highlander Mage is one of the most popular archetypes at the moment, and it's also one of the most effective archetypes at the moment. Somewhat surprisingly even, Highlander Mage, even though it lacks consistency because there's only one copy of every card in the deck, it has still been able to outperform other mage archetypes like Big Spell Mages and Cyclone Mages. This particular Highlander Mage build is from Vicious Syndicate. It's a fairly regular and standard Highlander Mage build overall. The most uncommon card that they're running is the Witchwood Piper. Other than that, it's pretty much business as usual. So, given that you're running 30 different cards in the deck, then how on earth are you ever going to find what you need? Well, in this kind of decks, you really need to think about your cards as groups of cards. So you have groups of removal pieces, you have some draw pieces, you have some tutor pieces, you have some win conditions. It's not so much about finding any single individual card that you like, as much as finding some specific cards of a specific type that you need for the matchup. Well, I guess with one exception, which is Luna's Pocket Galaxy. Luna's Pocket Galaxy is by far the best performing card in this deck. Getting access to your Luna's Pocket Galaxy, you try to mulligan for it, you're really, really trying to look for this. Mulligans with this deck are typically Luna's Pocket Galaxy and Arcane Intellect. You want to get Pocket Galaxy if at all possible in every matchup. You always want to draw in every matchup. Then, if you're facing some kind of an aggro deck, then you try to keep some defensive tools like Doomsayer or Frostbolt, or Zepris the Great, which in slower matchups is typically better later in the game, but can be used early on against aggro. But really, it's Luna's Pocket Galaxy Arcane Intellect that are the most important cards to mulligan for. And Luna's Pocket Galaxy just wins games, change the cost of minions in your deck to one, and once minions in your deck cost one, then we get to the point of, yeah, the deck list continues and continues. Just playing this stuff out, because one costs Archmage Antonidas, excellent win condition. Antonidas, some spells, get fireballs, opponent gets wrecked. Other one cost cards, one cost Alex Straza. If you have any minions on the board, one cost Alex Straza, burn from hand maybe. That can just be game. One cost King Fauris, so summon a board for you. And when you have these 10 drops, these 10 drops are extremely good targets for your Conjurer Calling. So Conjurer Calling on a 10 drop is very high expected value. That's the best thing that you can Conjurer Call nowadays. Not to mention that you can, of course, still do Mountain Giant Conjurer's Calling with this deck, but with just one Mountain Giant and one Conjurer's Calling in the deck, it's very unlikely to find the two. But yeah, you have a bunch of really big stuff in the deck. If you can make them cost one, then that's pretty much a way to win the game. If you can find Pocket Galaxy naturally, that's of course great, but you actually have a tutor for Pocket Galaxy too, because Total and Pilgrim discover a copy of a spell in your deck and cast it at random targets. If you're in a slow matchup especially, playing Total and Pilgrim on 8, have it cast the Pocket Galaxy for you can be extremely solid. Other uses of Total and Pilgrim include having it cast Power of Creation for a board in a box, or have it cast Puzzle Box of Yogg Saron if you're behind and you need to try to clear the board and get back into the game. So the ways to win with Highlander Mage, Pocket Galaxy is the central way. Get your minions down to one cost, just have unsurpassable tempo from that point. But you can also win with regular costed minions, with Antonidas giving you spells, you have some freezes on the board so you can actually build a board, you can freeze the opponent's board, you can go face, you can defend yourself to the victory, you have stuff like Flame Strike here, you have Blizzard here, Total and Pilgrim can also cast Flame Strike or Blizzard so you can defend a lot. Also we have very defensive secrets in Ice Barrier and Flame Ward. A Dark and Keysmith can give you even more defensive secrets so you're able to try to defend yourself against aggression. Just overall a ton of power and value in the deck. If you enjoy this content then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now let's go take a look at Highland Mage in action. This looks like Pocket Galaxy on 5. Worth crafting Dino Tamer, yes, it's absolutely worth crafting. Great card. 
and Highlander Hunter is one of the tier 1 decks. You can also find information on the tier 1 decks on my YouTube channel. Four days ago I made a video of the best decks to climb to Legend, and today Vicious Syndicate released a report which listed 7 tier 1 decks, and 4 days ago I made a video of the best decks, I listed 7 decks, and they are the exact same decks as Vicious Syndicate now rates as tier 1. Of course, Vicious Syndicate is not always correct. I'm not always correct. But it's still nice when things align. And sometimes they do. I think I want that secret from my deck here. But what I'm really working towards is that Pocket Galaxy. I do like the Stargazer Luna. But I want to go into Pocket Galaxy next turn. I may draw something I don't want to draw. It would be obviously insanely powerful after the Pocket Galaxy too. Maybe I want to use it after the Pocket Galaxy. I just think face now. Go in Pocket Galaxy next turn. Hi Turk, do you have a Patreon? No. But you can subscribe on Twitch and you can subscribe or join as a member on YouTube. So there are two platforms on which you can support me. Is this a Cyclone Mage, by the way? Whoa. It's getting scary. We're still going with the Pocket Galaxy here. So this looks like a Cyclone Mage, not a Highlander Mage. Why do you run Raven in this deck? Because Raven is a great card, and I like having great cards in a deck. Gives me something to do in the early game. I mean, if I play Luna now, it is going to get answered. It's going to draw at least one card. Possibly more. But not necessarily. Then I have Ziliax option, kill the banana buffoon. Sandbinder is going to draw an elemental. It's going to be Zepris, or it's going to be Mountain Giant, or it's going to be Siamat. That one's interesting too. I think I need to go with the Luna now. Keysmith seems good here. Mm, Doomsayer seems fine. Behold the tools of creation. Mm, this is okay. I mean, if he wants to leave the board, I mean, he can hit me in the face with this. And then leave me with the board, if he lets the Doomsayer go off. I'm totally cool with that. That key smith is a little bit annoying. <laughs> Especially if it picks up a spellbender. The only targeted spell I have in hand right now is the Conjurer's Calling. I don't have lots of big spells in hand, so this summons a bunch of tree drops. Not re nearly the power level that I would be looking for here in general. He still has a banana in hand. Still a little bit uncertain what I... I mean, there are three options I can get from the Sandbinder. Do I take... Three tree drops and a seven drop? And a, and a wisp? I mean, I might. I'll take a Spellbender too. Oh, it was just an entity. Ooh, mana tide. Spell damage plus two. Mana tide weaponized wasp, hinge clan sneak. Some kind of clear is coming. Or not. I mean, he couldn't check for Spellbender because my board was full. Bunch of random spells. Okay, things are start just starting to get interesting here. I can trade away a couple of minions so that I can start Conjurer's Calling the Forest. Trade there. Trade there. 
9 cards in hand at the moment. Wasp can trade there. We do Gonchur's Calling on the Faris. He has no secrets up. Don't Gonchur's Call again. Am I happy with these? 4, 12 and an 8, 8. I think I'm happy with those, yes. This will draw me another card. That one's going face. I want to get the other new secret up here, right? What if my board is full? That's not a big problem. I can do it like this. This way I still have the Mountain Giant Conjurer's Calling, if I need, in the future. That's still available to me. He has three random spells. That's not a random spell, that's main deck card. Would he main deck a... what? Counter spell? Is this actually a Reno Mage? It starts to look like it could be a Reno Mage. Could be a Flame Ward. It really could be a Flame Ward. Kills a couple of minions if it's a Flame Ward. This should be fine, right? These are all going face. He goes down to 15. But I can only get one fireball to his face. One fireball to his face right now should be enough. It's the Antonidas. We need to conjure a skull, no. Just ice barrier. And deal 8 damage to the face. I can even drop in the mountain giant, it's fine. It's probably going to be a Contra Warrior. If it turns out to be an Aggro Warrior, then it will be painful for me. But the Ancient Mysteries might help, because it could fetch the Flame Ward. Alright, I want to draw a little, I want to get to my Pocket Galaxy, then I want to start jamming threats on the board. Hi, <laughs> Hubba Bubba. It's good. I draw, but I don't want to play this. I want to play this probably together with Antonidas at some point. So it's not an aggro warrior. Preemptively snip snapping. I'm fine. Nine cards in hand. So next turn we're trying to play the giant, but he can kill it with the mummy. It is an aggro warrior. Okay, I didn't see that coming. So giant coin conjurer's calling cannot be played yet. That means that I'm going to play a doom say here. Next turn is the giant coin conjurer's calling. All right. Slowest Aggro Warrior ever. The Doomsayer will obviously be killed here. Darius Crowley. Okay, this is a weird build. Interesting. Still the giant coin conjurer's calling, despite the Darius. I guess it is. Giant coin. Conjurer's Calling, Ice Barrier, this should keep me up, and if one of these survives I can just Conjurer's Call again next turn, so he has to kill them both, he can kill them both, I mean he can easily kill them both, but it does cost him the entire board. Oh, it's the Highlander build, okay, that's why there's Darius in it, okay. So that could give him like a polymorph. Then he doesn't have to use the entire board. Oh, betrayal. That's actually better than polymorph. Good Zepris. Zepris is smart.
That was an excellent, excellent play. Not very expected, but excellent. So the option to look for like flame ward from the keysmith and freeze the Darius. Zepris giving me a four mana spell. None are good enough right now. Then there's the car tooth, but that will just make the Darius grow. But if I can't pick up a flame ward, we'll see. I think I need to go with this anyway. I couldn't pick up a flame ward. And it's ended, but I need to first bolt the Darius, of course. This is putting a lot of pressure on me right now. Zephyrus for Flame Strike. Uh, too slow for next turn, I think. Or would it have been okay? Maybe it would have been fine. But I might play Tonate for Blizzard. Like, that's an option too. Arcanite Reaper is pretty annoying. Ouch. That's a little late for the Pocket Galaxy. I need the Defender here. Then I have like Zephyrus Blizzard, but I might just get beaten by the weapon, if he has any buffs for that. He's looking for the health lucky to make Darius survive, right? Maybe not. He might just have lethal here. We're about to find out. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming in. Down to five. So Leroy can kill me next turn. That's awkward. If there's a Leroy in hand, that's lethal. Total and Pilgrim could find Flame Strike. That would wipe the board. I can't get a reliable enough of an egg. Taunt minion on there. What could Zephyrus give me? Six mana. It just doesn't give anything strong enough, right? Oh, there isn't isn't a spell or minion for six mana that would do it. Well, the Roy will kill me. And this has to be the blizzard. Leroy's lethal. Well, he's a singleton deck, so there is no second Arcanite Reaper. But there is a Lackey, so... Leroy can kill me, some kind of Lackey might be able to kill me. He had neither of those. Is he going to find one for next turn? Do I have a guaranteed way to survive next turn? No, Alex isn't a guaranteed way to survive next turn. Don't see Amat. It's not a guaranteed way to survive next turn. I don't think there's a guaranteed way to survive next turn. Lord Jaraxxus. I like Lord Jaraxxus, right? Healing touch. I like healing touch. So unless he top decks the lethal now, and it's Leroy, right? Maybe Grom. Those are the lethal outs. So I could just set up a taunt minion on the way and heal myself to 12. Or I can heal myself to 15. Push 8. Put him down to 19. There's so many ways for me to win this from here. I'm just trying to think which one is the best. I think going to 15 now is the safest. I think it's safer than a taunt. Because even if he has Grom Inner Rage... Grom Inner Rage Lackey would actually be exactly lethal. 
Maybe I'll try to keep Ray of Frost and Ciliax. Let's see. I have the Reno for some board clear. For some sweet board clear. So, right, all right. Got a Doomsayer, Doomsayer, Ray of Frost, blocking stuff. Deadly Shot is, of course, an option. So, it's probably a Highlander Hunter. Highlander Hunter is really good against Mage, but it's not an automatic loss. So, we still have a chance here. Got something to hide. This might be a time to use a Doomsayer. We proc the Snipe, that's okay. I can freeze that one for the time being. He can still kill this in several ways. But are any of them worth it? Maybe they are. Oh, there's the Coin Pocket Galaxy available now. Coin Pocket Galaxy means that Ciliax cannot kill the Sun River Spy next turn. It's just so good. I just think we have to do it. This puts him on a very short clock. He has to find answer very quickly. But he might have the tools to do so. Could be a freezing trap. Who always hover? Cover is sweet. And he can have a deadly shot out there. It's probably going to be Highlander, so there's not going to be a second copy of Snipe. Which means that I have some options, like I could just play Ziliax on this board. I can also play an Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier is fine. I'll ping there. This, this kind of tells him it's a flame ward, but he's going to attack anyway, so he will figure it out regardless. Then I have Reno to clear the board next turn. Or do I? No, now there's 12 held on the board. Reno doesn't kill all of this stuff. But now I can flame strike this board for free. Yeah, like that. Mm, Blizzard seems like a good card to discover. For later. Now I just flame strike. And I don't want to play a third card because I don't want to proc a potential rat trap. I mean, if Kalagos gets frozen, there is the problem that Kalagos cannot be replayed. And all of this so far is fine. Let's just play Ciliax on this board. He only has two cards in hand. I think this is just Ciliax board. In face. Ciliax might get frozen. We'll see. Do I need to add weapon removal into my own Highlander build? I don't think I have any at the moment. I saw him use a deadly shot. Alright, now he has all the secrets. So there will be freezing trap. And all the goodies. Freezing trap, pressure plate, snakes. Explosives. Unlikely to be misdirection, right? I think it's a little unlikely. Do I give him a bow charge? I guess that's the real question here. I could draw my flame ward. Can't activate Reno so that it would kill the. Xilex is going face here. It's probably going to get frozen. Then I can just replay it. And I can play Zephyrus. No, I wanted the Harrison. Sorry, I was a little bit a little bit slow there. Really wanted the Harrison, of course. 
No, I guess it's okay. An echo minion. Right. Just some rats and snakes and stuff. I obviously wanted the Harrison. But I think it's okay. Or can I play enough cards and then I proc the rat and then I just re know the rat away? I could do that. Witchwood Piper. And this will draw. Zero cost secret. I get the pressure plate out of the way if there's one. Then we get the flame ward. So we get the rat out of the way if there's one. Then we have the Reno. And then we have the mountain giant. So something like this. He could have a Zul'jin, which would cast a deadly shot. And all the secrets again, of course. But if there's no Zul'jin, then he only has snake snake trap left, right? Oh, he has a random one from Hunter's pack. Snake explosive and a random one. Okay. Snake explosive and a random one. Oh boy. Let's see if there's a freezing. That's the explosive. There can still be pressure plate. There will still be a rat trap. How do I even want to do this? So far I haven't played any cards. I can destroy a random secret. It was the snakes. This one goes face. I'll freeze that and I ping face. I knew there was a possibility of pressure plate, but that's why I played the minion first. So that it's smaller the chance that he has something coming from the pressure plate there. Double life drinkers. And here I was thinking that this was... Here I was thinking that this was Highland Hunter. But he has two life drinkers. I'm going to have to Alexstrasza myself. That means I probably also have to do some trading here. I don't want to play Luna out there yet. Luna might help me draw next turn. That double life drinker really caught me by surprise. I mean, he has not played a single duplicate other than the life drink. Whoa. No, who knows about these secrets anymore? Oh, let's see. Let's see I'm going to have taunt. How many taunt minions do I think I need? Let's play the card of defender first. The tools of creation. And then the key smith. Splitting image. In the sea armor. Wind Fury. Divine Shield. Alex will try to hit face. So I'm at ten. And what does he even need to have a chance to win here? Well 
So let's see what's this going to be like. What kind of paladin are people playing? He might look at this so he's not playing quest paladin. It could be like an aggro paladin. Or it could be the Murlocs. It's probably the Murlocs, right? Murlocs seem like the most plausible one. That would be the expected one. Yeah, the two mana spell looked like a freeze. It was Ancient Mysteries. Draw a secret from your deck, it costs zero. And I had drawn all the secrets from my deck too, so... It wouldn't even have worked. I guess I'm playing the Luna here. Worst case scenario is that he can coin Blessing of Kings on his minion and kill the Luna. That could happen, depending on the archetype, because I don't know the archetype yet. But it's Murloc Paladin. Okay, next turn there's going to be a board full of Murlocs. Unless I can pick up a counter spell from the Keysmith. Counter spell from the Keysmith would completely ruin his plans. If I can't find the counter spell, then what? He placed the board full of Murlocs. I won't be able to get rid of it. Well, Flame Ward is the next best thing. Because then, when there's a Flame Ward, then he needs to have a Cold Light Seer in hand for next turn. Which he could have. He has so many cards in hand, so there's probably a Cold Light Seer. Cold Light Seer just wins the game, right? I could look for a freeze from Zephyrus. That would buy some time. Does it buy enough time? I guess it has to. I'm actually Lightning Storm works too. It's just lightning storm. My hand is too full. Well, that was fine. Zepris just knows. Ran a little bit out of time, so didn't have time to get the optimal, optimal hits with the minions. I think I proc that flame wood. But now I see both cold light seers, and I see both amalgams. So my next flame wood is going to be pretty solid. Yeah, I think we should have this now. Unless he has Nomi. Does he have Nomi? He could have Nomi. So against Nomi I would need... My Doomsayer? Something like that. He can play a lot of Murlocs to buff the Tidecaller. Probably need to kill that. Can't play a preemptive Doomsayer yet. I don't think that's an option. I've seen both Cold Light Seers, I've seen both Fish Flingers, so there is no way for him to have health buffs. Damage buffs, of course, are available. So Sandbinder is drawing Siamat or Mountain Giant. Okay, we're drawing. Because I want to draw cards. I'm pinging away one of those reborn Murlocs too. There's still a chance of Jeff Nomi in the deck. Lots of these builds are running Jeff Nomi. Even though statistically they shouldn't. So with the Nomi board I would need a freeze with the Doomsayer. Flame Ward for the next Murloc board. He managed to pick up a charge Murloc. That's actually scary with the Dooms and the War Leaders. He's going to play Murloc War Leader. And he can push some damage. Oh no. That's a problem. Ok, 
Gets me all the way down to 15. He has one more charge Murloc left. He could get at least 6 damage through with the Tide Caller. One more charge Murloc. One more War Leader. And Flame Strike this board. So he can push four with the blue gill warrior. Both oracles are gone. One war leader's left. Then he has Leroy. He can't do war leader, blue gill, and Leroy on the same turn. Then there's Zephyrus, obviously. That can give him some damage. Here comes the blue gill. Oh, blessing of kings on blue gill. That was now the Zepris card. True Silver Champion Leroy. True Silver Champion hits Leroy. Interesting. It's a little bit off still. But then there's Nomi. My only answer to Nomi is the puzzle box. The only way I can answer Nomi is with a puzzle box. That's harsh. Still a little bit off with Leroy. Oh, doesn't choose to attack. An interesting line. Reno top deck seven eight eight damage on board. So these will die. He has 10 with the Leroy. But what about the Nomi? Puzzle box is the only way I can have to answer Nomi. Kalegos doesn't really help here. It has to be the Reno. So the puzzle box would have to clear the Nomi board. I don't have any other options, right? Flame warding doesn't do anything. It does create a little bit of uncertainty. Interesting. I can play that. It might even be useful if Puzzle Box deals damage to the Domi board. So here's the Nomi board. And the only answer I have is the Puzzle Box. But I might be able to pick up something from Kalegos too. So I can do Kalegos, then I can still play Puzzle Box after Kalegos. If I can't discover an answer. Well, we discover a Puzzle Box. Let's play it and see what happens. Okay, does it clean up? Well, that was a disappointing puzzle box. Well Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.